Okay, so we're just here with Wicket this morning. What we're gonna be doing is uh, making a little video here to show how we use Wicket's obedience and the training that we've taught him so far to add some structure and some routine to his uh, to his life. So starting with our morning routine here, this is the first time he's being let out of his crate this morning for a potty break. And what we're gonna be doing is uh, showing you how he uses his obedience commands to navigate the house and provide him with the leadership that he really, really needs. And it's gonna be important for his owners to follow these uh, this kind of routine or this structure in their day-to-day -day lives, especially when he first comes home, but um, even carrying on after that to again, provide him with the leadership that he needs and the direction. So what we have, we have the slip leash on here. We have the e-collar on as well. So as soon as we open this crate up in the morning, that's the first thing we do is slip leash goes on, e-collar goes on, remote is turned on, e-collar is turned on and we're good to go. We're waiting for calm behavior in the crate. Typically, if I open that door, I can just ask for a sit, but I'll often just correct them for attempting to step out. If I open that door and Wicket starts to step out, I'll say no, tap on the e-collar and step into him a tiny bit. And that's gonna go, he's gonna go back into the crate. And then what we should see is like now he's laying down and that's what we wanna see. We wanna promote that mindset. So what we're gonna do is release him when he's in that calm state of mind. So we're gonna say, Wicket, come, recalling him out. Then we're gonna ask him for a sit, Wicket, sit. Good. Now again, we're adding some structure here, right? We're, nope. We're not just releasing him so he can go off into his own little world and start sniffing around, eating things on the floor, whatever the case is that he would want to do. He's quite a, nope. Quite an excited guy and he does struggle. No. Withholding commands. No. Sit. Good. So we're going to make sure we're holding him accountable for those commands. And you can do that with the leash or with the e-collar. So anytime he breaks that sit, I'm saying no. Tapping on the e-collar to give a correction. And then I'll tell him sit again. And I'll use that leash for a bit of guidance there. So we're going to keep moving now so he doesn't get impatient. Heel. Giving that heel command so we can navigate the house without him rushing ahead. Stopping at stairways. Sit. And making sure. No. Once again, making sure he's not rushing ahead, especially in these, what we call thresholds. That's stairways, that's doorways, stuff like that. Nope, sit, good, heel. Again, you can see he gets impatient. As soon as you uh, stop paying attention to him or giving him some direction, he starts to go off into his own little world and that's where these incidents happen. That's where these bad decisions are made and poor behavior is formed. So we're really kind of taking away some of that freedom for him to make his own decisions. Heel, by using these commands and holding him accountable. Again, rushing up the stairs, correcting if he rushes ahead, saying no, tapping the e-collar and giving a little pop back on the leash there to guide him into the proper position. So now he's expected to heal through the kitchen and we're gonna let him out into the backyard for a potty break here. And then we'll come right back to this. Sit. Sitting at the doorway before he's released for any doorway. That means any doorway, including the back door, the front door, the car door, the crate door, all doorways waiting to be released through. Nope, sit. So again, you can see struggling with the obedience here. So we're just gonna make sure we have our e-collar here. Wicket, come, sit. Good, and you can see that's kind of the importance of having that leash on, right? As soon as I take that leash off, nope, I lose a bit of control. So I really want to make sure he's understanding that I'm in control of this situation. And just because the leash isn't on doesn't mean he's free to start making his own decisions here, moving around, sniffing around. So now what I'm going to do is release him, opening up this door first. If he breaks the sit command, I'm going to say no. And again, correct for breaking the sit command. No. Sit. Good. Now we have a sit command. He's patient. He's waiting. We want some eye contact so we can say his name. Wicket. Break. Getting that eye contact, wicket break. Getting that eye contact, that's how we get the dog to ask us for permission is by giving us eye contact. That's again, what we refer to as deference in these situations. So again, thresholds, any resource we want our dog to practice deference with. So this is one of those situations, the doorway that we're gonna practice that every single day in every interaction. And it makes such a big difference if you can do it successfully. So that's kind of the morning routine here with Wicket. He's gonna go out and go potty now, and then we'll show you letting him back in. We'll do a couple other commands and stuff with him and go for it. Okay, there. just opening up the door, leash is back on. I just put it back on here before we came in. Leash is on, he's in that sit command. I am gonna grab his e-collar remote here as well. And so now we can release him back into the house. And the way we're gonna do that is by recalling him in and having him sit so we can close the door and then again, continue to move through the house in that structured obedience command, right? That calm state of mind where he's following us instead of off making his own decisions. Nope. Again, some anticipation, just a no. Sit. A 
pop on that leash and then I can align with the command if I need to. And you can see I'm applying that pressure upwards on the leash to enforce that sit command. Wicket come. Want him to sit here, wicket sit. Good, using these obedience commands now to navigate the house. So what we could do now, there's a few options, right? Of course, we could just keep moving down towards the crate, I do, or towards the crate room. I need to let some of the other dogs out here. But what I want to show you first here is just using some of his other obedience commands in the house and how we can do that in a way that keeps things structured. So if I give him a uh, down command right now, wicket, nope, sit, wicket, down, no, down. So that's a no, a correction tapping on the e-collar and then repeating my command to get him into that down. He's just kind of learned that down reliably. Nope. Down. Again, no. And then correcting, marking with no when he breaks that command, tapping my e-collar, just a quick tap. Level 26 right now, so a relatively high level to get that correction through to him. And that level might go up even. Giving that command, he ignores it or breaks it. We mark with no apply our correction after the no marker and then we can repeat the command or help them as needed you might see me like after i say no and correct i might say down and then nope down point to the ground i might use the leash to help guide him down especially if he seems genuinely confused but i do know he knows these commands he just nope has a very hard time down no down maintaining these commands right under especially in situations where there's maybe my storage filled up on my camera it stopped filming but anyway he's in this down and now we can kind of we're free to make coffee we can do whatever we need to do now right and sorry the kitchen is a bit of a mess at the moment but again just showing how we can kind of use these obedience commands to keep things structured for um, our dogs right if he breaks this obedience command again i can force that rule of him um staying in no correction down Good. Again, marking with no, the remote was actually behind me in this instance, so I said no, reached back behind me, maybe took a couple seconds after I said that marker, and then I corrected. I said no, he actually stopped breaking the command and almost looked like he was going to go back into that down when I said no, but very important we follow through with our corrections in these situations. That's a, a super important component here. It's making sure if you say no, you follow through with that correction because that means that, that that behavior that you didn't want to happen happened and you need to you need to let the dog know that it can't happen again. And the only way we can do that is by following through with our correction. If I just said no and he went back into that down, yeah, sure, he fixed himself in this moment, but then he's going to be inclined to break that command again and again, knowing there's no consequence behind that, that marker, that no, and we want our no marker to be quite powerful and associated with a consequence 100% of the time. So anyway, this is just some of the commands that we're using with Wicket throughout the day-to-day. -day. So he's in the down command. I'm actually making a copy right now. And then we're going to bring him down the stairs using our heel command, making him wait at the stairs and putting him back in the crate for feeding time. So we're going to go do that with him here. And then uh, we're going to bring out another dog and go from there.